Okay, here we are, Mastermind with Neil Schwartz and our special guest today, Miguel Solar. What, Miguel, how you doing? Can you hear me? Can I hear you? I can hear you well, Neil. Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, uh, just a reminder, Miguel, who doesn't work for our company, but sometimes I think he does. Um, you've been with us, Miguel, for um, in this virtual office almost two years now. Yeah. So it's been 19 months, 19 months, uh, month in, month out. Month in, month out, almost every day. Almost every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're not there in the morning, you're usually there in the afternoon. That's right. Absolutely, fantastic. And um, wh why did you make a commitment to do that? I mean, you're many miles away. Um, you know, you've been in business for a long, long time. Wh why did you make that commitment? So the, the first thought that comes to mind there is one that, keeps repeating in my mind. And I remember when I first started real estate in my first three or four years, I was enthusiastically inspired. Nobody can get in my way. Right. I was going to go out and do the best I could. Now I was fumbling the conversation, whatever it was, I didn't care. I was going from A to Z as quick as I can. I was never looking back. And somewhere along 23 years, I forgot who that guy was. And so when I started figuring out how do I find that guy again, I realized that I needed to start showing up in places that perhaps in my mind, I thought I didn't need. And the reality is, is I need it every day. Interesting. So you weren't going into the office. That wasn't important to you uh, at, at that time. You didn't think it was important. So you weren't doing it. And you were doing about how much business? Well, let, let me let me reframe that, Neil. I, I was going in the office, but the intensity, ah. the madness in a, in a positive way, that kind of just started fizzling out and then routine set in. Okay. Right. Repetitious boredom, right? It's, it's another way we can call that. Absolutely. Got it. Excellent. Okay. So, so that was 24, 20, you started... I started in 1999 and then I jumped on with you at uh, the beginning of 21. Beginning of 21. Yeah. Got it. And kind of been here every day since then. Yeah. Uh, what kept you connected to that? Because a lot of people come in and a lot of people go out. What kept you connected? So for me, it was, it was um, another way. It was a, a form of accountability whereby I made a commitment that I wanted, like, this is what my, my job starts at this time. And this is where I show up to check in. So this was my time card. It's okay. still my time card. It's Got showing it. up to these, to these events in the morning. So in uh, 2000, so in, in 19 and 20, about how many transactions were you doing? Uh, 1920. I thought that question might come up. What did we end up doing? I believe. Uh, I uh, we ended up closing out 46 transactions. Okay. Yeah. For about how much volume? GCI. 500,000. 500, okay. Very respectful. 530. 530. And then the following year, we did relatively the same numbers at 750,000. Okay. So that was 21. Yeah. Uh, 21, correct. Okay, got it. So you closed. So what was the difference besides the prices went up a little bit? So so I started selling higher property, uh, more expensive property. So it was in higher end neighborhoods, more million dollar type of properties. In fact, Santa Clarita Valley set a record high of more million dollar properties sold than any other um, previous year. And I think we could probably say that across the board and even areas that never saw a million dollars, but it was just something that, you know, our buyer, you know, the average sales price and buyers were buying eight, 900,000. They could afford it at two, two and a half percent. Today is different. Yeah. So uh, were those clients different to work with than the lower prices? Uh, no, same, same people. Same, same people, yep. right? They all need to sleep. They all put on their pants the same way. Um, they have the same struggles, same emotions. Everything's all the same. 
Why do you think you didn't work on that price point earlier in your career? Uh, I think mindset starts kicking in in terms of um, where you see your, like where you're lining, like there's so many stories we create in our heads that keep us from moving forward. And what, what I wanted to do, Neil, and, and if you don't mind, I, wa I want to share a little something here today that's been really important for me and something that I discovered literally just this year and, and being with your organization and prospect with them has, has literally opened up like holes in my armor. And then I really realized how many holes in my bucket I had coming into this year. Okay. Please. What I, what I want to share with the group is I, I really want to put everybody here on an even playing field. There's nothing better, special, more, or like there's people on this call that are doing significant amount of business than I am significantly more. And, and it's, it's, it's amazing that they're showing up to these calls still after doing that much business. There's agents here, Neil, that are doing, that are new agents, just trying to get their first deal, trying to get to 10, trying to get to 15. Right. right. And so I, I really just wanted to, to, to put this all down, like at the same level, because what I found out and just being in your, in your, and just around everybody, it's frustrating when you see people struggling in their business um, and they don't quite get it in terms of like, I've been doing it for 23 years. Right. And the challenge is I, I see people that like, don't understand it. I'm frustrated, but um, here's why I'm frustrating or frustrated because I'm frustrated at myself also because I'm making the same mistakes 23 years later, right? And so one of the things that, why I bring that up is that we, we have to take this business, like, let me give you a, for instance, we are all knowledge seekers, okay? We, we go to call, you know, we're going on this mastermind group and we're seeking great knowledge. And I think that's where it starts. But for some of us, including myself, is we're junk, we're, we're inspirational. We, we look for the inspirational highs and we really don't do anything about it. So we're out here seeking knowledge. We're out here getting inspired, but we never put anything to action. Two, two or three weeks ago when I was um, down at your office um, prospecting and, you're, and I was right next to you, I remember you said something and it, and it started all like piece together, which is why I'm here today. It's like, Miguel, agents don't always listen to what I have to say. They just don't listen. <laughs> and so like, like I'm going to turn the question back to you. It's got to be the most frustrating thing that you as a broker and professional uh, face every, and a trainer that you face every day. Like, why is that? Why don't we listen? I'm waiting. Tell me. Well, I don't know. I'm asking you, right? And then no, the fact a thousand reasons, a two thousand reasons. Um, everybody's everybody's got a reason, but the people that take action the most, are coachable the most, are are the big giant winners, and everybody else has got an excuse. And so 100% and, and like for this, this type of phone call, I, you know, I, I don't know that you're going to get, it's not a super sexy uh, interview in terms of, Hey, this guy's doing big numbers, but what I would want to do is inspire some of us, all of us, uh, one good point or something that you've heard in the past that you just start implementing that in your business. And then you don't have to think about it again. And then tomorrow or next week you implement, Neil, in, in fact, I asked Kara, my assistant to go ahead and post up. Uh, your interview page and this Neil never talked to me about this and and I just wanted to do it for you because you give me so much value just being part of this group that I feel compelled to give to whoever an individual back or to your to this meeting just give back and every single morning that I open up my browser this interview page comes up and it's all your interviews and I started you know just listening to the interviews there's urgency there's action there's purpose in what these people do, right? And I start looking at myself and I'm like, man, why am I, you know, why am I doing X amount of it? So, so don't, I'm not asking myself, I'm asking you, why are you stuck doing X amount of business? 
What is it that you're not putting in place? What are you hearing that sounds good, but you really don't desire, right? Um, Tony Smith gave me this, uh, asked me this question and he said this, Miguel, what are the goals that you say out loud? I'm gonna quote, quote it right here. What are the goals that you say out loud that you really don't want? Or you're really not interested in? Basically, it sounds better than they are real. And I, I think what happens is a lot of times we just, we get inspired by other people's goals and we never really take action. And we get stuck, we get stuck with fear. And like, what are gonna, what are the results? Uh, what's gonna happen if we do it and we fail? And we're never gonna progress forward. And this is, this is, this talk is to me. I'm never gonna take it to the next level unless I put myself out there in an uncomfortable situation. I'm never going to take it to the next level unless I make those phone calls and go through the script and ask the tough questions. And so I just want to encourage this group here um, as part of this discussion is like, let's not just seek knowledge. Let's not just get inspiration highs, but let's put something into action because you have what, 50 some phone calls a year? Neil, you, you, you have about 40 to 50 phone calls a year. You're talking about interviews? Your interviews. Yeah, probably, probably 40 a year. Right. And so if you took one good point from one of those phone calls, whether it was a script, uh, whether it was an action item, and you implemented that into your business, you would have 40 good habits moving you forward year after year. If you even took half of that, you would have 20 good habits year after year. Right. right? And Which so it serve you well. Absolutely, 100%. Good stuff, very good stuff. So I wrote down here, urgency, action, purpose, intention I added, and consistency. Is there anything else that you pulled out of those videos that could help move people along? Well, so, I mean, that, that's the, that, that is basically it, right? It's the action, the urgency, the intensity of what we do things. I wanna, I'm gonna share some numbers for this group because I, I just want you to like understand that we could get stuck in routine. And routine isn't necessarily bad. Routine, there is a danger in routine, but there's also habits built in routine. Now you can call routine a habit. You can call routine a skill, uh, a mini plan. I mean, there's so many, so many words that we can use for routines. But I want you to look at, listen to these numbers. And again, I'm, a, I'm fully, this is just absolutely raw, okay? I'm sharing my numbers with you. 67,833 contacts while I've been in business, okay? I've worked, so that's 60, almost 68,000 contacts. By the end of this year, it should be right there. 4,555 days worked, 900 closed transactions, over 9 million in gross commissions earned. I broke it down in about 80 phone calls or 80 contacts. It's turning into a paycheck. And I've been in the business for 23 years. So would it be fair to say that I, I, like daily, I do make phone calls. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a routine that I make that I do daily. Would that be fair to say? Sure. And so the question that I've been asking myself is why is it taking me 80 contacts to get a paycheck? Wow. And there's nothing wrong with that. Cause some of us are making more, but I've been in the business for 23 years. Again, I'm putting myself on blast here. What am I not doing? What action am I not taking that's going to get me to making 40 contacts, or let's just start with, why don't we get that 80 contacts on the average down to 60 contacts, down to 50 contacts per paycheck, et cetera, et cetera. There's some, you know, some of the strongest agents you've known um, and perhaps even work in your organization. Where, where are they at? 30, 40 contacts per paycheck? 30, 40 contacts. The best I've seen is 22. 20. Yeah, 22. But 30, 40 is superstar status over time. But, but I have to tell you, Miguel, I do want to stop you for just one second. Sure. And I've been doing this for almost 50 years. 80 contacts to get a paycheck is still 
really respectable. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's very respectable. Making $9 million is very respectable. Okay. So now continue. <laughs> well, no. And so I don't share that to impress upon you like that type of activity. But what, what I want to get at is like there, there's something that I started figuring out in myself is just routine. I like there's a danger in routine. Right. And then so we have the problem and then there's the solution. The danger in routine is we get stuck. You know, um, Tony Smith, I was going back to my old coaching calls. He's all, I call the database. I can call my database and not really get any significant results out of it. Right. And so my question was, is where, what, what's happening when I'm calling my database? Is there a lack of confrontation? Right. Is the present, is there, is there lack of enthusiasm and purpose in that conversation? Am I just going through the routine of making the phone call? Right. And so what I started finding out as we're coming now towards the end of the year is like, I'm behind my goals. You know, I, I'm, I've got to break 500,000, uh, 500,000 in GCI. Now, given that I've had some, like some, a lot of moving parts coming into this year, but the reality is, is if I'm showing up to the, if we are showing up to the office and not taking action, I, like, like Tony said, you, you might as well just go out golfing, right? And so I, I guess what I'm saying to me and to you is we got to start putting more of what we're hearing into action versus it just being something we talk about, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so it makes a lot of sense. And what my sense is uh, the, the first word you threw out, which was urgency, is one of the keys to your recent success, isn't it? Yes, but here lies the problem, Neil. Okay, here's, here's lies, here lies the problem with all of us. The last two, uh, uh, think about this very clearly. The last two years, the buyers and sellers have beat agents on appointments set. I want you to think about that. Our job daily, Neil, is to set an appointment. Over the last couple of years, let's get rid of the last three months, buyers and sellers have beat us on appointment set. And what I mean by that is they've been calling us, hey, I want to go look at this home. Hey, what do I need to do to get it? There has been zero skill needed for us to say, hey, you better write over asking price because they knew they were going to lose the property, right? So now... And, and I just talked to an agent in the hallway this morning coming into the office. He's saying, Miguel, 30% of our listings, we would just send them DocuSign. And the right. first time we saw the home was when we went to go take pictures, right? Sellers, in some cases, were objecting on commission, but many of them were like, hey, let me get into this bidding war, right? And so did it require any urgency on our part? Would you, would you agree on that part? And would you agree on that part? Well, it required urgency to get out and go get the listing, but it didn't require urgency to find a buyer. Or, and our skill set really wasn't like our, our, our plans, our mini plans. How do we convert this lead? It didn't take a lot of skills. It didn't to take get business in the past. It in didn't past take any years, right? Agreed. But now we've seen a shift in our market, right? Um, buyers, like, I'll, I, I got to say, I, in, in all those trend, you know, 900 transactions, I would, I would comfortably say that I represented 38, to, let's just call it 40% of the buyers in that, in, in, in that group of uh, transactions. And so what I found today, I just, I literally represented a buyer on a transaction that just closed, uh, I want to say a couple of days ago. And I'm telling you, it felt like if I sold five transactions or five buyer transactions over the last two years, this one transaction took so much energy in terms of negotiating before the contract went into escrow while the repairs, while there were requests, you know, the request for repairs, and then just figuring out possession dates. I mean, like I had to negotiate three different times. I was exhausted. 
And what I realized, Neil, is that this is how it was prior to this madness 24 months ago, right? We really had to have the skill set of understanding how to negotiate. So uh, before, you know, negotiate a best price for the buyer, make sure the buyer and seller were happy. And what's interesting is right now we're back to that point. And a lot of us were losing business every day because we're still stuck in that I'm not going to chase a buyer. I'm not going to chase a seller. We are losing big time. And so for me, I recognize this in my business. And so I'm making shifts um, in terms of how I'm going to be handling my business moving forward. Good. Excellent. So what shifts are you going to make? I don't know. I haven't written it up. I'm just kidding. Um, so one of the things that immediately started implementing here was increasing the quality of my conversations, right? How, in other words, script practice. Now I've been, we've been doing it for the last couple of years, but I think there's another layer of uh, script practice where it's, it becomes uh, where we have, instead of memorizing it, it becomes an, second nature of what we say and how we say it right so for the first my first step is to just increase the quality of the conversation and that that's going to require getting on role plays doing them on your own <laughs> writing out scripts i'm going to tell you i'm going to be going back to your to your interviews and picking up the one or two liners from some of these incredible agents mike putnam for example was an incredible interview Right. Um, that that you had was really inspiring for me because there was certain things that he would say uh, that I'm like I wrote down, right? And so I'm going to start implementing more of these, uh, let's just say, all star quotes or scripts or sayings into my vocabulary into my language, right? That's the first the first step. Um, the second step is I'm, I'm I literally have many plans for everything that I'm doing. Uh, so I just call it like mini plans. I, I write down, if we're going to do an open house, what's the plan to conduct the open house at the highest level possible? Um, what is the plan for negotiating requests for repairs at the highest level possible? What are, what's the language? What's, what, what am I going to be saying? How am I going to present that? How am I going to present a contract when a buyer, when the home is listed for 900 and the buyer only wants to pay 835, right? Two transactions this month that I negotiated personally, the property was listed at 905,000. I got it down to 835. It was a ton of work, right? But I convinced the agent, the agent got excited, you know, whatever, right? And convinced the seller. The next transaction was listed at 590 and I sold it for, I, I represented the buyer at 820. And so right there, I just realized there's, we have to have a plan. Like what is the plan of presenting offers that aren't quite at list price? Are we showing comparable sales? Are we calling the agents that are currently have pending escrows to find out what those sold for, right? Do we, are we trying to find out how many offers they had on their property? Because if they only had one property, the chances are I'm, there's nobody else besides my buyer that's going to buy the listing that I just made an offer on. Right, so the, this information right here empowers us to make a stronger presentation. So that, that's just a couple areas, of course. And then lead follow-up, I got plans for, like what's the speed that we're getting? We, we talked about it before here on this, in this call. What's your, uh, how fast are you getting to your leads? You know, they're not gonna get any better if you let them breathe. I can get, it's not wine, people, right? It's urgency, it's immediate action. And then being able to convert those into, into a prospective client. All right, great. Fantastic. So speed, speed of trust with the client, speed of relationship, speed of getting to the call. We did some little bit of research. I don't know if you did this or not with your, your stuff. But we found that if we don't take action with a client, within one week of getting the lead, whether the lead come at an open house or the lead come from um, 
uh, a sign call or an ad call or what, whatever comes in. If we don't set an appointment and get that client, at least in an, a, we're doing an appointment setting, yeah. um, then the, the odds of that deal, that lead going into contract almost drops to zero. Absolutely. If, if something doesn't happen in the first week. So if you don't, if you don't get them into an appointment in the first week, then you might as well do nothing with them because the odds of it turning into money, at least based on the research that we've done so far, I mean, is that is that kind of what you're talking about, Miguel? What 100%. In fact, it was the next page of my notes right here that I that I had on lead follow up. Sorry. <laughs> no, and I appreciate it because it's a good segue. And, and he, here's a reality: like this is the mistake, people, that somebody has made sixty-eight thousand phone calls. Blah, blah, blah. I've been in the business for 23 years. This is something that I found in myself, right? That I started in, in just picking up, ramping up the number of contacts that I made. I mean, I literally have a lead, a stack of leads, right? And the problem with that is that I would write the lead and rather than going from in my lead follow up saying, okay, I'm, I'm getting a freaking appointment out of this, right? I, it, the phone call went something like, hey, I just wanted to follow up and kind of see where you're at with things right? I don't think that's the right approach today. And it's not the right approach today because there are so many real estate agents out in the marketplace. There's so much noise out there. Our client right now is going online to on Zillow to look at homes. You know, the, 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 there's so much information available out there that if we don't take that lead and then the next time we have a, 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 a contact with them, it's not to literally close them for an appointment. That's a problem. And I found that in myself because all of a sudden, wait a second, I got to do lead follow-up, but wait, I have to hit my numbers with new lead generation. And all of a sudden I'm screwed up. Like, I, I, like what do I do first? I don't know. Right. And so the, the, the problem that we, that I think we have comes from, perhaps some of the behavior that we had over the last couple of years where the clients were setting the appointments with us, we weren't setting it with them, right? And so we have to shift the way we're looking at our, our, at our clients because somebody else has that same lead. And I don't think anything's changed over the 23 years that I've been in the business. It's just now there's more competition. Got it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the question that I, that I, that I put here in terms of urgency is when we get a lead, how are we handling that? Are we making a phone call? Are we texting the lead? You know, one of the things that uh, you brought up, which we started, uh, we implemented was home buy. You know, you said it very vaguely on, a, a, I want to say over the last six months, I heard it again uh, a couple months ago. I'm like, you know what? Neil said it. I heard it again. Uh, Robert said it before. I'm like, why, why do I just hear things? So we put it in a play. We just download our database and now we're providing information for our clients, our consumer, our leads. So they get information from us, not so they go out and get it from somewhere else because they're going to get it from somewhere else. Somebody else is calling as well. But what is the mini plan we have? What's your speed to lead? Are you texting? Are you video chatting? I use a bomb. We just started using bomb bomb and I've been paying for it for years, right? Let's try to come because we get the lead, but we got to convert them and we got to build trust. And then from there, we set the appointment and open doors or present on a listing presentation. So what is that for you? Do you go knock on their door? I'm, I'm, mo I'm moderating a mastermind group right now. Was, the call was just before this, and it was on working on your database. And how do we get more out of it? Well, one of the rules that I put in is anybody new that's in my database likely is a resident in the area that I service. So one of the rules now is they're not going to go in there until I go to their front door and meet him, even though I had a conversation, because then I can make a real hard decision if they should be in my database or not, because ultimately we want people working for us. And if we're giving them information, we want them to reciprocate that information, you know, by giving us business. And so we have to set up mini plans and I don't know what the right mini plan is for the folks on this call, but we all know what to do. I mean, we're, you know, get down on a piece of paper and write a two, three, four, five step of what's going to help your business, whether it's a lead follow-up, whether it's negotiating a contract, 
handling requests for repairs, whatever it is, your listing presentation, what's your approach prior to your listing presentation, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there really has to be urgency in, in that area of our business. Urgency and taking action. That's what you keep coming back to. Yeah. <clears throat> Good stuff. Excellent. Is there another point you want to make on this? I mean, like, what are some areas that we, we, we should have more urgency in besides lead follow-up? Um, setting an appointment. What about our urgency on our goals, right? Again, are those goals really something that you want or is it something that just sounds good, right? Or that, you know, when you repeat them to somebody else, they're like, oh, wow, I want to be just like you, but you're never doing anything about it, right? Um, let's look at our daily lives. What er like, can we find areas in our lives that require urgency, attention, intention, intention, right? Um, our bills, our kids, our, our partner, wives, or husbands, like what areas in our environment do we need to clean, right? To help us with our mindset. So we're coming into a, into a clean office or we're, or, you know, just being organized. What are some of the to do things that we've been pushing off and procrastinating on? Like, I, I think that one of the things that's been helping me lately is just creating urgent or, or responding to things in an urgent matter. Okay. Because it's so easy for me to say, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I, it's the worst freaking habit that I have. And I'm, and, and it's like, okay, I am freaking sick and tired of that crap. Right. I'm just tired of it. And so I go back to the old habit. And so the only way to break the old habit is by replacing it with something else. Right. It's not, not stop procrastinating. Like how do I stop? procrastinating. I, but I can replace it with action, right? That's how you stop procrastination, right? Replace it with an action. So I, I'm finding little areas, right? Like making my bed in the morning, drinking the same thing that I, you know, drinking my shake every time and like creating this routine that's going to help me move forward. And that gets me excited. Showing up here at 830, making mm -hmm. phone call, you're right. Prospecting, getting on your hot mic. There's just just a lot of little things that we can do to create more urgency and intensity. Right. Yeah. Good for you. It's really good stuff, Miguel. Thank you. So in 22, what do you think you're going to end up with GCI? Well, I, I can tell you it won't be less than half a million. I, I can tell you that right now. And uh, I'm really, you know, the, the idea was to go to repeat last year knowing that it was a, a market, a possible shift in the market. And so I, I just won't accept anything less than half a million. Um, first of all, because I need it. Uh, secondly, because my, my you know, funds are running low. And, and so like, I literally have my back against the wall. That's why I guarantee that I'll hit half a million dollars. Now, if I continue with my, this mindset that I have and I continue with urgency, there's no reason why I wouldn't be able to break 650 to getting close to seven. Right. There's no reason why. Right. And so I, I'm taking this guy right now. And, and again, I'm putting myself on blast and just kind of being very raw here because next year it won't be the same story. Okay. <clears throat> next year, there's going to be a lot of advancement. So next year, you're going to hear a different guy um, when you see him. Right. Because I just know this about me. I, I literally have my back against the wall and I'm just sick and tired of that same old bad habit that we and we all have it. Right. We all have it. And I'm just sick and tired of it. Right. And so now we're moving things forward. Sounds like you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine gave me a quote and um, it's pretty it's pretty intense. But you're like, aren't she said it this way? Aren't you fucking tired of yourself? <laughs> right. I mean, I, think about it. I don't think that's a, a negative um, affirmation. I really don't. Because, yeah, I'm sick and tired of myself because I do the same shit all the time. And what's the definition of insanity? Do the, the same thing all the time, expecting a different result. So right? one of my favorite sayings, Miguel, that you might take home and put on the wall someplace is finally be the person that people think you are. I love it. You, 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 that's your quote. Yes. Finally, finally be the person people think you are. Yeah. And when you become, when you are that person, everything opens up. So Neil, you shared that with me 
Um, and that's one of the things that, like, I think is one of the puzzles that's like one of the pieces that's gotten me to where I'm at right now on this phone call, right? It's so interesting is when you surround yourself around people that are doing more, think about this, guys. You don't expect different results in your life by hanging around the same people that you hang around with, okay? Some of us have to cut those conversations short. Let me give you a quick instance. I, I work out with Neil Weichel. I think every, like a handful of you might know him on this phone call. And I meet with Neil every Tuesday because we're always exchanging, hey, what do you got? I got this buyer, this listing, blah, 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 and, and a group of other professionals. And Neil said, hey, you've been working out. And so I said, Neil, let's start working out at you know, 5, 5.30 in the morning. And you, listen, listen to the superstar's mindset. He's always paying attention. Purpose, intensity. Listen to this. He's all, well, Miguel, if we're going to work out in Valencia, it takes me 20 to 22 minutes to get to the, to the gym. So I can meet you there at 520 or 522. I'm like, so Neil, what's, what, what, what's up with the two minutes? Oh, the two minutes if I get the stoplights. Why I bring that up? It's because this guy, is, this guy is doing things with purpose and intention, and he's calculating the time of what it takes, you know, of, of what he's trying to, his goal that he's trying to achieve. In this case, we're working out, we're building strength, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just very interesting, his mindset, when he shared that with me, because I'm like, damn, how many times do I just take my time? Like, I don't take my phone to the bathroom anymore, okay? Don't get a visual on this, but dang. How many of you take your phone to the bathroom and what should take two minutes took 20 minutes, like find little areas in your life that you're just wasting, right? And be more intentional, have some urgency in what we're doing here. And at the end of the day, go home and crack a beer. You're good to go, right? You said this, Neil, this is something else that you said, and I love it. You said baby steps every single day, not giant steps every now and then. Correct. Right. And, and I absolutely love that because, guys, we don't need to to take our game to the next level to improve our life. Right. I, I really I would love to hear people here just share how they've improved their life by taking action somewhere. But it, it's not like you need a, a 20 point mini or 20 point plan to to get healthier or to <clears throat> or to have better relationships with people around you. Sometimes it's just picking up the phone. Sometimes it's just going walking around the block and that starts inspiring you like, Hey, that wasn't so bad. So, so many times we make, we, we put this big mountain, like it's, we have to climb this Mount Everest to do this thing that we want to do. And, and a holy crap, that is exhausting. And it really just took five minutes to fold the damn laundry that was sitting in the dryer for the last week. Right. Hey, but we have to think about it every day. You've been looking in my, in my uh, pantry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's so. great, Miguel. Fantastic. Hey, Miguel, will you take a few minutes and maybe answer some questions? Would love to. Absolutely. All right. Okay. This has been really, really good. Great information. I love the urgency, the action, the purpose, the intention, and the consistency that we're talking about. Questions for Miguel. Questions for Miguel. Just raise your hand or, uh, or just speak out. I have one new. Go ahead, Sandy. Um, I would like to have to know the one that he said to write an offer. And I want to write, I want to know how to write a strong offer to get accepted. Can you share a little bit, please? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, Neil, if it's okay, is I asked my assistant Kara to um, I'm gonna ask you to I'll put her email on the chat if that's okay. And if if I have several mini plans. And again, there's nothing magical, sexy about it. It's just action orientated that I'll share. Just send your, your name, your cell phone, and your email. And the email is going to be in the chat box. Neil, is that okay? First of all, she posted. Yeah, that yeah, up? yeah. For, okay. for sure. All right. For sure. So we love it. I'll send you that. And, and it's really long. I mean, like, like the mini plan we put for buyers, which has shifted a little bit today, but not by much, was the same plan that I used to present offers over the last couple of years. Now I didn't really work with a lot of buyers, but my buyer agent did. And we have a step-by-step -step process from showing the home, calling the agent we're interested. We're working with a really good buyer. I mean, like, I, I don't know the whole steps like per se, and I'll email it to you, but it, 
but it requires you to take some form of action, right? Call the agent, let them know you're interested, write the offer, uh, present comparable sales and why you're making the offer at that particular price, right? A couple of things shifted because before it was like, hey, the appraisal was removed. Who cares? Do you have money? Yeah, you got money. Okay. All right. Then you need to remove the appraisal, but things shifted a little bit, right? Now it's presenting, you got to present to the agent and then convince them that your offer is good versus anything that they don't have on the table, which is a bunch of days on the market, right? And so uh, sending them comparable sales, doing the right follow-up, having your lender follow up with that particular, um, with that agent. So I'm not going to bore you with those details. It's an incredible question, but again, it's, it's a systematic approach. Like what we need to have these systems in place daily. My question to the people in this group is like, what systems do you need to put in place um, to help your life move forward, to help your improve whatever you're trying to improve in your life, health, family, social work, finances, et cetera. Great question. Thank you. Thank you, so, Nigel. Appreciate it. Good. Okay, good. Other questions for Miguel? So, so I have a question for Miguel. Yeah. So my question is on the urgency standpoint, let's say you were calling a seller, a seller lead. How do you create urgency? Is it a is it a script? Is it a an energy? Is it both? Like how do you create urgency when you're following up on a seller lead? One hundred percent, it has to be both. Now, Robert, wouldn't you agree that the way to get the most money for your home is going to be when the competition is is at its lowest? Yeah, that makes sense. Sure, and, and naturally, you're going to get a higher price because there's less homes competing against yours. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, how many? People do you know that might be selling or you've heard like, hey, we're going to wait till after the holidays to sell our home. How often have you heard that? I hear that all the time. Sure, because they say that spring is better than than the holidays, correct? Correct. So in essence, if you were to list your property during the springtime, whether it be January, February, or March, after the holidays, do you think you would have more competition or less competition competing for a home to sell? Probably more. You'd have more. So in order to get you more money for your home, it makes sense to put it up for sale when the competition is at its lowest. Agree? Agreed. Okay. sounds like we should get together today at five or tomorrow at six. Which one's better for you? Well, we should probably do this today at five. Five o'clock, right? And so it's a matter of developing that confidence in, in, in the energy and conviction of what you're saying. Guys, the only way you're going to get conviction is if you practice that script 150 times in your sleep. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, don't be talking in your sleep, <laughs> but you know what I mean? You'll be able to say it in your sleep. No, that's great. Really yeah. powerful. Good stuff. Thanks. Good question, Robert. Thank you. Great answer, Miguel. Other question questions for you. Yeah. Hey, Miguel, you were mentioning um, quality of conversation. W what are some of the talking points or bullet points that you can mention that are high quality of a conversation the the what what i've discovered there's small words that i'm using in the scripts as i'm having conversations with people such as tyrone how would selling your home improve your life at this point so mm. the word there is improve right i got you it, it like who doesn't want to improve their life, right? When I'm calling just listed, just solds, I'm calling in the neighborhood and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to alert you. Well, who doesn't want to be alerted on a home being for sale, right? Mm -hmm. A great home priced at, you know, 700,000. And I feel it's going to be well-received. Another word that I've been using a lot of is well-received. Right. And so there's so many, like, if you just go back to these interviews that Neil has, don't go back there to listen, go back to those interviews to, to, with an intention to pick up something. Is it a system that I want to pick up? Is there a word or two or a phrase that I want to pick up? That's all you need. Mm. Because they're not going to inspire you. Like the people on the other that are getting in, they're, I mean, they're going to, they're giving you some tips and ideas and suggestions to help you in your business. Now you got to take the action, Tyrone, right? We got to take the action. We talk about that in our mastermind group. We got right. to put something in place. Otherwise, it's just we're information junkies. We, we were on inspirational highs that we're never going to do shit about. 
and I'm sick and tired of hearing stuff and not doing shit about anything, right? right? We all suffer from this, people, right? We all have this problem. Okay. So take out. Yeah. I hope right. that helps. Yeah. But I also have other Absolutely. scripts that I use, Tyrone. Okay. Good point. Thank Good you. question, Tyrone. Thank you. Great answer. Thanks, Miguel. Other questions for Miguel this morning or this afternoon, I guess? Uh, have a question, Miguel. Go ahead, Juan Carlos. Hey, Miguel, you, you mentioned that at the beginning you were on fire when you started doing this business and the first few years, and then later on it kind of went in a different direction and you were finding yourself kind of lost. How did you find yourself again to get the fire back? Well, part of that is um, my net worth over the last 18 months, like that's changed that's changed, right? My net worth overall. And so what I started realizing that if I continued with the same behaviors, my net worth wouldn't improve. And so I started thinking about um, Quan was, what was it that got me in the beginning part of my career? What was I doing then that I can repeat and do it now? Because now I'm better scripted. I can have better conversations. I can have better energy. I have more confidence. And so what I'm trying, I'm, I'm finding that kid again. Okay. I was in my, I want to say in my late twenties, something like that when I started the business and I'm, I'm, I'm just going back to that. Remember, okay, what did I do? Did I, did I meet a buyer at a, at a door that quite frankly, I couldn't convert over the phone Did I, did I meet a seller on the phone that hung up on me? Those are things that I did when I was back, back in the day, right? And so if, if you're doing 200 deals a year, you may not have time to do that, but guys, I want you to look at your calendars. If we're all working, Neil, what's the average 230, 240 days a week of work, like work days for an agent? Should 230, they... 240 a year. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, did I say a day or a week? Yeah, so yeah, you, a said, uh, you said, yeah, but it's a year. Yeah. And, 30 to 240. And if we have, let's just call it 240, we in essence should be on an, we, we should have the mindset that I'm going on some type of appointment every day, right? And the appointments is not always going to be a listing appointment or a buyer appointment, but it could also be a FISBO at the door, expired at the door. Uh, it could be a lunch with a AAA client that's highly influential that gives you business. It could be lunch or a meeting with an attorney, bankruptcy or trust attorney, right? Another important, important is are like working on the scripts and the listing presentation, right? And so we have 240 slots every single day to do something that's going to propel our business moving forward, right? And so Juan, rather than me saying, oh, I just don't feel like it right now, right? That's the first red, like I'm starting to pay attention on my feelings. And when I start saying, I don't feel like it right now, say, Shh, okay. How, how long is that? Is that going to take me five minutes? Are you telling me that I'm going to think about it for two days versus spending five minutes and getting it done? You follow what I'm saying? Is, is, am I going to look at the leads week after week and not make or day after day and not make a phone call? Or should I maybe go knock on their door or make a quick phone call? Right. It, it's, it's closing the gap between our options and taking action. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. You All right. Good. Good stuff. Other questions for Miguel? Other questions? Okay, so, um, this is Tiffany. I have a question for you. Go ahead. I, I like that you uh, refer to a lot of the old show uh, uh, interviews, which is perfect. It's great. Yeah. And I just noticed that all the superstars, you know, when they get interviewed, they talked about their schedule and it looks like their schedule only includes prospecting and that's it. Um, they don't talk about how like the, the backside of it, like how do you get so many deal done and, and like, how do you handle those numbers of deals that's coming in? Yeah. And so, especially if you don't have an assistant yet. Yeah, no, that's a good question, right? And so, um, it, obviously, it's going to come down to whatever you put down in writing. Like, you know, I have friends that want to get together, and, and it's always a conversation until we put it down on a on on paper, right? And so, 
you you literally have to be very intentional in what you're doing. Let me let me let me let me explain what I mean by that. You know, I I'm working out right now, and I set up. Uh, but the problem was is that I, in my mind it sounded good. Hey, I'm waking up at five and I'm going to go work out, right? And it's good for two days, and then I miss three, and then I'll do it next week. Like stop, go, stop, go, right? So what I had to do is I had is Tiffany correct? T Tiffany, what I had to do is I had to put accountability in place. And if you go to uh, David from Arizona, what's his um, Arterium, I believe, or anyway, I think a lot of people know him in this call and listen to the interview. Like the guy has accountability for almost every single step of what he does, right? And so I set up $500 every single morning if I don't call or text a guy named Carlos Gutierrez out of San Diego that I'm, on my, I'm up and about, right? And so that is accountability. I have accountability with another friend earlier this year where we're challenging each other to weight loss. And so to, to answer your question, is you, you got to give yourself deadlines and you got you to put it inside your schedule. I have six kids and people always say, oh my gosh, how did you do it? I don't, I, shit, I don't know. But if I had two, I'd be asking the same question. If I had three, I'd be asking, I don't know how, I, you just do it. Right. And so then the question is, is how badly do you want it? How bad uh, is it just uh, uh, like, hey, I got to do this. Like if you really want something bad enough, you're going to get it done. Right. And so I would encourage you to put that in a schedule in terms of worrying about how many deals they they do. It, are you doing the same amount of deals as they are? Don't answer. Probably not. And I know I'm not some of these guys that are doing a lot of big deals, but there is my schedule there is my life inside of from morning to nighttime like i can fit things in there it's just a matter of being intentional about it you know this has been awesome fantastic miguel we really appreciate it we really appreciate your time uh we appreciate your energy and you being part of the role play you come on and and do the um uh, you're involved in the role play you're involved in the open mic um, is that open mic been a, a helpful to your business and holding you accountable for over this last couple of years? Yeah. And I'm going to challenge everybody who's doing on the zoom, like you got to get on open mic because when you're on open mic, I'm the type of person that, and, and I hope I brought some value to, you know, if I brought value to one person, I did my, I did my good deed today. Right. And I know there's a few more people that got value, but here's my point. I have to bring value or then I'm not doing, it's, it, then there's no, I'm not getting, like, I don't want the glory. I just want to bring value to people. And when I'm on that hot mic, I want to make sure I'm talking to as many people as I can and closing as hard as I can um, when I'm on that hot mic, because it gives value to people who are listening as well that get stuck in the, in the script. Um, listen to the people that are on hot mic, listen to what they're doing right, listen to where they're getting stuck because we're all we're all having the same problems and then just figure out how you're gonna get past when you get stuck and adopt what's actually working, what, what's keeping the conversation. To answer your question, you know, I know it's a long, uh, I took the long road, or long road home, but my, my level of urgency has dramatically increased from doing hot mic and it's on the days that I do it that I have a higher success in my calls. And it's the days that I do two or three 30 minute slots right. that are the best days of prospecting ever. And well, I actually believe after role play and, um, and previewing a property, the best thing you can do to help build your business is get on the open mic. And what I call on the open mic, and those of you that have done it, you know, to me, it's about the show off factor. We're all kind of, showing off a little bit. And we've been able to harness that show off factor in a good way because we want to look better in front of people. So therefore we close harder. We are more intense. We're more focused. We're dialing faster. I mean, um, and appointments are being set and deals are being done. So congratulations. And, you know, Miguel, we love having you around. Um, it's, it's, it really does. I, I say this to a lot of people. We love your energy and we love you being part of our organization. Um, 
in, a, in an indirect way. And we want that relationship to last, you know, forever. Absolutely. So we thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us. Hopefully we've done and helped you at certain levels at certain times. 100%. And um, it's, it's a good, it's a win-win for everybody. So everyone open your mics, please open your yeah. mics. Okay, unmute yourself. Hey, hey. Thank you, Good job. Good job, buddy. You know, you know Thank you, love, Miguel. You know what I love about this call, Neil, is now, right now, I I have to step it up a notch, don't I? Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, you do. Are you are you on the calling next? On the what? Are you open mic next? No, I'm not. I'm not. We but could I, fix I, that, couldn't we, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do right now, Miguel, is we're going to take a few minutes, go around the room, um, ask everybody to, to share what they've learned today. Uh, if you can hang, that's great. If you can't, you got a hard stop. We get it. Yeah. So, uh, And we'll see you tomorrow morning at Role Play, I guess. Yep, I'll be there. And uh, I'm going to meet. You can't hear you. Somebody uh -oh. muted. I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute out here, and uh, I'm gonna get something to eat in the background here. I'm, I'm running uh, a little bit hungry right now. It's been a long. All time. right. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate right. it. Okay. So, um, really good stuff. Excellent stuff. What did we learn today from Miguel? What did we learn? You're right. I love the energy. Yeah. Loving the energy and the urgency. Yeah, that's for sure. Anyone else? Anyone else want to share? Just speak up, please. Yes. Go ahead. Ayana. Um, what I've uh, confirmed from here, Miguel, is what I spoke with Patty about earlier yesterday, is that I have been a collector of information versus implementing. I have, I've learned so many things, but um, it can either be confusing or overwhelming, or I'm not making the time for it. But... I'm collecting information nonetheless. So it's time to put in the work and, you know, remove the habit of learning versus doing. Oh, that's really great, Ayana. And I know that you have the ability to do all of that. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. Bowles. <laughs> I got a great idea from him. When you put you, somebody on your database after you're talk, calling the rounds, I used to just send them a, a card. Thank you for speaking to me. I can go and take them the card at their house rather than just send them. So that was the big. Uh, I think that was a great, I, that was a fabulous mm -hmm. idea. It was a great little nugget um, mm -hmm. that kind of slipped un, uh, under the radar a little bit, didn't it? That was a great idea. You bet. Um, okay, other um, other things we learned today. Neil, the the couple things that I wrote down here that that haven't been mentioned yet is the idea of if you just work on one thing a week, Say that again? just one thing a week, one then you'll percent. essentially be working on let's just say it's 40, 40 things a year you would create, if it's one habit, you would create 40 good habits. If it's one skill, you know, this week I want to really get the listing presentation down. So I'm going to write it out every day. I'm going to chant it out. Uh, I'm going to role play it every day. I'm going to really get this down. Okay, great. You know, and then next week is, you know what I really want to get? I really want to get the for sale by owner script down. So I'm going to write it out every day. I'm going to chant it out every day. I'm going to role play it every day. I'm going to get my CRM set up. Whatever it is, it's every week. If you just pick one thing to really, really focus on, you'll get 40 things done in a, in a week. If you don't do that and you try to do the listing presentation, the for sale by owner and the CRM, it'll take you months, years to no, get that it's, down. It's a, it's a great thought. It's a really it, good it, thought, Robert. It's just one thing a week. And then the second thing, when I asked him the urgency question, of what would you say to a seller? He didn't um or ah uh, or he just jumped right into a role play. He didn't even ask me. He just jumped right into a role play. And so the the challenge that we always talk about for people is can you get into a script on the spot? You know, he did he wasn't prepared, he wasn't ex 
expecting someone to get him into a role play, but it didn't bother him. He just jumped right into the role play. And sometimes that's us. What if you're at the grocery store? What if you're, you're at a, an event and somebody asks you about real estate? Are you going to, um, ah, uh, or are you going to jump right into something really quickly? That's a very powerful thing to be able to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Knowing the scripts and dialogues. One of the most important things we can do and know them at a really high level. Okay. Other things that we learned or picked up today from Miguel? We want to share. <clears throat> so I have more. Right. I, I, <laughs> let me, but I want to go now. <laughs> um, you know, I keep coming back to these words that, that he wrote down and, and um, you know, attitude, approach, and expectation are things that we've talked about in the past. But, you know, I'm going to get these words written down, urgency, action, purpose, intention, consistency, um, you know, and, and, and you could grade yourself on those during a prospecting period, you know, on a scale from one to 10, how urgent did I act on a scale from one to 10? Did I take action in every case I could have, uh, was, you know, uh, what was my purpose for this 30 minute or 60 minute call? What was the purpose? Purpose was to get an appointment, set an appointment. The purpose was to find the Jones family. I can't find the Jones family and they're getting ready to list their house and I gotta get them. So let me take this next hour and go find the Jones family, go knock on the door, go knock on the door of the people that live next door to that and find the Jones family and have a face-to-face -face conversation with them to get the listing. That, that, that's purpose, that's intention. And then do that kind of activity on you know, a consistent basis, you're gonna change your business in a millisecond. So that's kind of what I took out of there, but you know. I like the idea of increasing the, the little mini plans, increase the quality of the conversation. Uh, mini plan for open house, mini plan for calling period, mini plan for negotiating contracts. I, I, I love those ideas. Those are great, really good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Miguel, appreciate it. I have, some, uh, have, I have something. Please, uh, Monica. So the... I believe it was under increase the uh, the value of the conversation. His nugget words, phrases, and words improve, alert, well received in using the conversations. I thought that was phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Those... Add, add better words mm -hmm. to our communication skills. Yes, it is, and I forget what he called it, but. Um, you know, whether right. he'll be there at role play tomorrow, you can ask him. <laughs> How would selling your home improve your life? Right. Right. The example he gave. And then uh, um, absolutely. Very, very cool. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything else. Anyone else have something they want to share before we go to uh, whose turn is it to? Neil, I just wanted to. To share, this is a book that I started reading, and yeah. it goes everything along with Miguel and you were talking about today. Oh, the slight edge, yes. Remind me, who's the author? Uh, Jeff Olson. Got it. 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 There's the Jeff has written two or three books, I think. No. Uh, this is the first one I I'm reading for. That's, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jeff, Jeff Olson uh, has yeah. some very good things to say. It's a great book. Absolutely. Okay, Robert, who's next up?